Food pyramids are simple visual guides to the types and proportions of food we should supposedly eat in order to stay healthy. While food pyramids vary according to diets and cultures, the basic idea behind them is the same. Foods at the base should be consumed in larger quantities and foods at the top should be consumed rarely. Unless, of course, you are in the middle of a gluten epidemic. It's upside down. Food pyramids have been debated and debunked, but there's no denying that we are what we eat. Can we apply a similar principle to our buildings? Can we rate structures based on the environmental impact of materials used to build them? That's exactly what the Construction Material Pyramid hopes to achieve. It was developed in 2019 by the Centre for Industrialised Architecture and Henning Larsen Architects. The pyramid highlights the environmental impact of the most used construction materials like structural steel, aluminum, double and triple paned windows, insulation, lumber and more. Data driving this pyramid is based on extraction, transportation and manufacturing. It does not take performance and lifespan into account. This interactive version of the material pyramid allows you to toggle between five impact categories. The first is global warming potential or carbon footprint. GWP calculates how much heat is absorbed and trapped by a certain amount of gas compared to carbon dioxide. The higher the value of the GWP, the greater the impact on the environment. Metals like aluminum, steel, copper and zinc occupy the highest level, while wood products have negative rates. They absorb more greenhouse gases than they produce during their manufacturing. The second is ozone depletion potential. During manufacturing, materials release certain gases that can degrade the ozone layer. When a single chlorine or bromine atom comes into contact with ozone in the stratosphere, it can destroy over 100,000 ozone molecules. This decreases protection from the sun's ultraviolet radiation. It affects flora and fauna, and it can even increase the risk of skin cancer. Polyiso and polyurethane foam insulation are the most harmful, while materials that require low processing, like bricks and aluminum sheets, are the least harmful. However, it's important to note that new versions of spray foam have reduced the ozone depletion potential by 99%. We discuss this in my video on open and closed cell foam. Spray foam no longer uses hydrofluorocarbon or HFC blowing agents. They use hydrofluoroolefin or HFO agents. So I'm not sure why spray foam is the number one culprit on the construction material pyramid. The third is photochemical ozone creation potential. Some materials produce carbon monoxide, nitrogen oxides and volatile organic compounds during manufacturing. When sunlight hits these compounds, they form ground-level ozone which can affect our health. High levels of O3 can disrupt ecosystems and cause eye and lung irritation. Metals and vinyl flooring are the main culprits, while wood-based materials are the safest. The fourth is acidification potential. The extraction and production of some materials release sulfur dioxide, nitrogen monoxide and nitrogen dioxide into the air. They react with water, oxygen and other chemicals to form sulfuric and nitric acids which can fall to the earth as acid rain. Paints and linoleum have a much higher acidification potential than straw and rammed earth. Lastly is eutrophication potential. An unnatural increase in nutrients like nitrogen and phosphorus in water starts a process called eutrophication. Algae feed on the nutrients, growing, spreading and turning the water green. In large concentrations, these compounds can lead to algal blooms, tainted water supplies and the death of fish. Steel production emits large amounts of nitrogen oxides compared to clay bricks. The construction material pyramid allows designers to quickly understand the impact of building materials. It reminds us that we should place value on the bones of buildings, not the stuff we fill them with. It also reminds us that building materials we choose have a huge impact on the environment, whether positive or negative. Let's talk about three materials that are featured in the construction pyramid. We've touched on them in previous videos, but they deserve more explanation. Structural steel. Steel production is energy intensive and one of the leading sources of greenhouse gases. Nearly two tons of carbon dioxide are emitted for every one ton of steel produced. It also accounts for 5% of total greenhouse gas emissions. But it isn't fair to only highlight the negative aspects of this material. Steel is essential to building wind turbines, electric vehicles, and mass transit systems, all the infrastructure needed in a low-carbon economy that isn't reliant on fossil fuels. 
To everyone that gave me hell for saying that building with wood is more eco-friendly than using new or one-time use shipping containers, look at the numbers. Cross-laminated timber. Engineered wood like glue lamps, cross-laminated timber and laminated veneer lumber have the potential to revolutionize the building industry. To improve the properties of wood and make it even stronger than steel and concrete, layers of wood are sandwiched with moisture-resistant glues and compressed under heat and pressure. Even though engineered wood is made of fast-growing trees and not hardwood trees from the rainforests, we must only use sustainably sourced wood. Responsible forestry practices involve planting a tree for every one cut down and avoiding mass clearing of forests. Before we end this discussion with concrete, I'd like to introduce the sponsor of this portion of the video, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community that helps me learn something new every day. It has thousands of inspiring classes designed to help you learn by doing. If you are a creative person or if you're trying to learn a new skill, Skillshare is perfect for you. I initially started with a Skillshare class on video editing in DaVinci Resolve, but then also found myself taking a productivity masterclass by Ali Abdal, a doctor, YouTuber, and podcaster in London. I found his videos on how to get motivated and stay productive very useful. You can now take this course for free by using the link in my description box. You'll also receive unlimited access to tens of thousands of additional classes for a whole month. Now let's talk about concrete. The data on concrete really surprised me. Worldwide, we use about 30 billion tons of concrete a year, which accounts for 8% of global carbon dioxide emissions. When I was researching concrete for my video on geopolymers, every article and paper claimed that concrete was one of the most polluting materials. But it ranks lower than steel in every category, global warming potential, ozone depletion potential, and even acidification potential. The manufacturers of cement and concrete now use recycled waste like fly ash, which can drastically reduce its carbon footprint. Holsom, a Swiss cement manufacturer, recently published a sustainability report which explained their path to zero carbon cement. I'll link that report in the description if you'd like to read it. I'm going to interview the person who wrote that report next week. So if you haven't subscribed to my podcast channel yet, check it out after this video. I think the takeaway from the construction pyramid is that materials like concrete, steel and glass have allowed us to tame nature and push the limits of engineering, but their extraction and production come at a cost. It's important for us to be aware of that cost and if possible, choose alternatives that are not as harmful to the environment. I'd also like to point out that material scientists are constantly working to improve manufacturing processes and the performance of materials. I'd expect the data on that material pyramid to change every year. I'll provide a link to the pyramid in the description below. Let me know what you think about it and what other steps we can take to raise awareness about carbon footprint of materials. I'll also link my Patreon page in the description. If you can support me, I'd really appreciate it. A big thank you to everyone already supporting me. Don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe button, and the notification bell too. Thanks for watching. See ya.